In this video, we'll talk about yet another source of help in identifying eigenvalues, and that's the trace. As you know, all eigenvalues of a matrix add up to its trace. Therefore, if we know all but one of the eigenvalues from other sources, we can determine the remaining eigenvalue from the trace. Let me illustrate this with an example. Consider this matrix, and we of course know two of the eigenvalues of this matrix. First, we see 7 alone in its column and in the diagonal position. Therefore, 7 is an eigenvalue and 0, 0, 1 is the corresponding eigenvector. Another eigenvalue we see from every row adding up to the same number, that is 10. So 10 is an eigenvalue and 1, 1, 1 is the corresponding eigenvector. So we're now two of the eigenvalues, two out of three, so the trace will tell us the third. These two eigenvalues add up to 17, and all of them together add up to the trace of this matrix, which is 14. So this one must be minus three, so that seven plus 10 minus three is the trace. So this one is minus three, and we do not know from the trace alone, the corresponding eigenvector. So we still have a little bit of work to do, and I'll do it right here. Although we've done it several times before, I think it's kind of magical how this works out, because I think that the trace property, adding up to all of the eigenvalues, even though it's simple to prove, is a magical sort of thing. So it's kind of amazing how we did almost no work at all, and we can be completely sure that this is an eigenvalue of the matrix, even though by just looking at the matrix without identifying the other eigenvalues, there is no evidence whatsoever that would suggest that negative three is an eigenvalue. So we kind of knew that minus three is an eigenvalue from other considerations, rather sophisticated considerations, and a variety of different features that we took advantage of. So I still think it's magical to subtract minus three from the diagonal and realize that, lo and behold, we have a singular matrix. So subtracting three is the same, subtracting negative three is the same as adding three. So we're left with five, eight, 10. All right, and the remaining entries are the same. Eight, zero, five, zero, one, two. All right, and indeed we have a singular matrix, a very satisfying feeling. And of course, we need to take these columns in proportion one, negative one, so that the first two, oh no, what am I saying? We have to take the first two columns in proportion eight, negative five, so that the first two entries cancel. And then in this entry, we have eight minus 10. Eight minus 10, that's negative two. So we have to take one fifth of this one. Let's just make sure of this. 8 minus 10 plus 2. That's right. So we could have written 8 minus 5 one fifth here, but because we prefer integers, let's multiply the whole thing by 5 and we end up with 40 negative 25 1. And now you can see why we could not have possibly guessed the eigenvector. Look how big the numbers in the eigenvector are. But nevertheless, negative three proved to be an eigenvalue. This is the corresponding eigenvector. And we have just determined all eigenvalues, all eigenvalues, and all the corresponding eigenvectors of this matrix without too much work. And they came from being alone in the column and on the diagonal, each row adding up to the same thing, and from the trace property. How great.